Another speech in the books for Trump filled with weird moments, hilarious gaffes, and of course the usual misinformation. The first clip I have to play for you though is just weird. That's it. I don't even know how else to describe it. The fact that Trump gets away with things like this in place of actual substance is mind blowing, but I guess it's what MAGA likes, right? <sighs> mom, I don't know, mom. This is getting, this is a heavy sucker. <laughs> oh, mom, I can't do it. <laughs> Boom. Don't really even have words to describe this. He doesn't have policies to talk about. He definitely doesn't have achievements to talk about. He doesn't want to mention his cases, so he's left doing this. <laughs> Whatever you want to call that. Next is him spewing a common talking point for the right, seemingly already preempting reasons that he can pull out of the debate. I just want to debate this guy, but you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna demand a drug test too, by the way. I am, no, I really am. I don't want him coming in like the State of the Union. He doesn't want him coming to the debate like he did to the State of the Union because Trump has never performed that well and it destroys the perspective he's tried to build for Biden. Remember, Biden is 81 years old. Trump wants you to think he's on his last leg, he has dementia, needs handlers to get around because he's senile, but that he's also secretly on drugs and his heart is just holding up, these two things don't go hand in hand. I've worked in nursing homes and I still work in healthcare and I can tell you right now, let alone just an 81 year old, perfectly healthy man taking drugs is almost definitely done for. Their heart can't take those things, let alone if they have dementia and have senile and all these issues, or senile and all these issues that Trump likes to talk about. The issue is he oversold his hand trying to paint Biden as senile, so now he needs an even bigger lie that he can use to crawl out of it. So I wanna thank the six Supreme Court justices, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, and Amy Coney Barrett for the wisdom and the courage that they showed on this long-term, very contentious issue. Trump is single-handedly responsible for giving the Supreme Court an extreme conservative majority, the same one that overturned Roe, rolled back affirmative action, and will only continue to remove barriers for equality, especially if we let Trump back in office to where he can then elect more Supreme Court justices. He wants to create this country for some, the rich straight white male, and forget about the rest. You didn't have me as president. You wouldn't have Minneapolis today, and you wouldn't have had a couple of other cities that we saved, or little beautiful areas. To be clear here, Trump saved no cities. He promised infrastructure investments for four years and couldn't deliver a sliver of what he guaranteed from his own mouth over 20 times. While Biden came in, first year signed massive infrastructure legislation that passed with bipartisan support from Republicans as well as Democrats. Something else Trump never once managed to do. So no, Minneapolis would probably be better position in a better position if anyone but Trump had been elected in 2016, anyone who would have actually focused on infrastructure rather than promising and never delivering. I thought we won it in 2016. I thought we won it in, I know we won it in 2020. Patently false. He lost by over 300,000 votes and about 7% in 2020 during the trouncing he took from Biden. And even when he won the election in 2016, he lost by over a percent in Hillary in Minnesota. He also promised to never come back to Minnesota if he lost in 2020 and look, now he is. He's always saying he won. That's, that's so he can justify why he came back. So he's just lying here and he's hoping to pander to the crowd. But then again, he is the man who says that he won all 50 states. So, you know, he's just incapable of accepting defeat.